where people are coming in from. So um, the idea is to have a, a good understanding of the demographics of who's on the call. So it should be pretty straightforward on your phone, guys. So I'll give you a couple of minutes just to scan that QR code. There's a few coming in there now. So you will have to hit the publish button to push it up to the to the map. And I'll drag it over here onto your screen so you can see what's going on. I don't take up the whole screen because the QR code will be blocked. OK, so we're seeing a good few people from Dublin, Limerick, Tipperary, that's good. Now they're coming in, good. Yeah, you, you kind of have to hit that publish button, so that slows things down a bit. So we, we can be doing that in the background as well. So we've got a few coming in from Dublin, that's good. OK, so that can be working away in the background, guys. I'll just see if there's anyone from elsewhere. All from Ireland so far. OK, so that's um, just to get a feel for where people are from, guys. And um, anyone that's joining us late there, there's a couple of more to come in. So if you get a chance, guys, get that QR code uh, scanned. And we'll move on now, I think. Three minutes past. So today, guys, we're, we're introducing um, um, a couple of different programs under DASB, which is the Digital Academy for the S Sustainable Built Environment. And uh, it's a hub for construction professionals to upskill. So it's, um, as you can see there, you know, it's for everybody. We've got architects, engineers, surveyors, craft workers, um, you know, technology. Uh, there's a mic on there. And, uh, the aim is that we will de develop and um, roll out some nice short modules there as well for people to pick up as they go along rather than committing to a large program. And um, there's some examples there of what they might be. So if you want to go on to the DAS DASBY website, you can scan the code there or, or click on the DASBY link there and that will bring you in. So once you're within the DASBY uh, platform you've got three different pillars um, that you can look at so in our instance we'll be looking at the digital skills there's also energy uh, and efficiency and then there's also the circular economy so you can have a look at that so just to give you an example if i click on the, the digital skills it should pop up in a sec And here you can have a look at all the different programs that are available. That's filtered out for just the digital skills. So that's for you to do in your own time. So next up, we're going to look at the programs that we're going to talk about today. So we've got three programs to talk about. It's the certain BIM, which is level eight, and then we've got the higher diploma in BIM, which is another level eight program that leads on. And then we'll be looking at the BIM and digital leadership, the level nine program. So um, with that, I'm going to hand you over to Andy, and he's going to talk about the CERT. Uh, Andy McNamara is ATU lecturer, and he's a program chair for both the CERT and the higher diploma. So um, I'll roll on to that there for you, Andy. Hi, folks. So my name is Andy McNamara. I'm program chair on the, the CERT in BIM. And um, so this CERT certificate is 20 credits takes place over one year, so two semesters. Um, it was first developed or developed out of the higher diploma in engineering and BIM that we set up in 2014 with the, the goal of just rapidly upskilling um, people in the workforce with real world practical skills in building information modeling. Um, when, if you start the course, students start taking the BIM virtual modeling fundamentals module, which is essentially modeling uh, 3D models uh, of buildings in Autodesk Revit. Following that, to choose an elective in their area or their speciality area. That's the second semester. So you can choose BIM architecture, BIM structure, BIM infrastructure, MEP, contractors, 
for BIM for sustainable building and energy simulation. So this is a blended program. It's half online and half on campus. And then students who complete this program can actually continue on and take part or move to semester three of the higher diploma in engineering and BIM. If you want to skip on to the next slide, please, Jimmy. So the higher diploma in engineering and BIM follow on from the, the certificate. So if you complete the certificate, it can lead straight on to the, the HDIP. So we see in red here, these are the modules that are included in the certificate. Once you complete these, you can start and move on to the BIM collaboration module and the BIM research project if you are continuing on the HDIP. So that's our, our route from the certificate in engineering and BIM through to the HDIP in BIM. Thanks, Jimmy. That's great. Thanks very much, Andy. Yeah, it's really a hands on program. Um, I know I, I worked on some modules with Andy over the years and um, it's, it's all about uh, getting getting stuck in with your authoring tools and learning by doing so. It's a really good program. Um, you didn't mention any of your awards there, Andy. Uh, it's won, won quite a few awards over the years. Um, yeah. I think it was the first course of its kind in the country. Um, it's, won, yeah, it's won quite a few awards in different areas over the years. Thanks, Andy. You're very modest. So guys, the next one up then is the BIM and Digital Leadership Program. Um, and within this program, there is a road, this is the roadmap. So what we're looking at is the different modules here. So there's one, two, three, four, five there in a row, right? So what we're looking at is the first one is a, a requirement mandatory module here, which is BIM and Digital Leadership. And this is the, the module that will start in January. So just to have a dive in there and have a look at that give you a feel for what it is. So you you have to, obviously it's level nine, so it's all about critically evaluating leadership and your and organizational change. We'll focus quite a bit on uh, mapping out um, your process within your organization. So the whole idea of this uh, module is for people to be working in the industry, uh, identifying gaps within their current processes and trying to align it to your ISO 19650s with the documents. So there's a lot there that we can take a look at the potential for um, for change and for transition as well. So some of the outputs you talk about there is we do a current state map where we look at your current state of your, your uh, process within your organization. Then we look at a gap analysis, uh, identifying what gaps there are. Then we look at a future state map of how it might look in the future. And we do like a five year uh, roadmap then where we look at you know, where you'll be in five years with regards to training or um, introducing digital tools or um, <clears throat> generally promoting BIM within your organization. So the modules are all continuous, it's all continuous assessment, so it's 100%. Uh, so it's 40, 50 and 10% for reflection at the end. So um, our reflection here at the end, I had one testimonial in for one of my students that I want to show you, and it was kind of what I, wanted out of the program from my side so he talked about kevin he talked about um you know he could he figures he couldn't complete it successfully without doing this program and in particular he what he talked about is each assignment led on to an, the next path and he could travel uh and this was how he wanted to do his program so he he educated himself he critically uh dissected the process and it's very, very important for me to see this kind of information coming back. So we found the resources that helped him transition. So that's what I was about. So we, we talked about all the different resources that are out in Ireland and the UK, essentially. And um, that was very important for me to understand that um, it, it actually worked. So on top of that, then we have industry speakers coming in once a week. So we had Sisk and BAM and we had Robert Moore from Build Digital in and Ralph Montague, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. We had. You know, PJ Rudden as well, obviously, is a uh, well known in the field. And we had um, from the UK, then we had Sir Robert Alpine and we had uh, Doran Engineering as well. So they were very interesting. So once a week, they come in for an hour to talk about their experiences and um, that information then would be fed back. 
uh, to the students and we would do a critical reflection on that as well. So that was very useful and it was nice for them to see what is being done in the industry um, currently and what is possible. So that's uh, a mandatory mod module. So the next module up then is delivered by Andy and his colleague Jared Nicholson. And um, this module is on vis visual programming. So did you want to say a few words on this one, Andy? This program or this module is currently uh, running at the minute. Uh, so Andy should have some nice insights. Yes, yeah, so we're running the module for the first time this semester. Um, and it, it's going great at the moment. Students are taking problems that they have in their workplace and we're using visual programming tools to come up with solutions to those problems. Um, so essentially building we call add-ons to the likes of uh, AutoCAD Civil 3D or Autodesk Revit. So um, our first project was in compliance, so they had to come up with a way to um, automate how they comply with something. So some of them took how they're they're exporting all their information from their model to room data sheets in Excel. So they wrote the add-ons using visual programming for that. So um so that, that made things easier for them in the office um, and I suppose that they had the backing of their employer too because it was making life easier for everyone in the office. So um so far it's going pretty successfully and we're very happy with it. Very good. Yeah I think the the program is successful because people bring problems from their from their offices and from their sites and they bring them in and we try and come up with solutions for them so i think that's very useful yeah but it's, it's like the the cert and the hdip it's as, it's as real world as we can get it um, and yeah. while, while being in a, an academic environment yeah very good thank you andy so that's the first of the electives so you know at, at, Number one, there is our mandatory module that starts in January. And then Andy's module there, we talked about visual programming as an elective. And the second elective then is a BIM for sustainability. And that is delivered by Dr. Wayne Gibbons. He's here on the call as well. So Wayne, um, I'll just bring up this slide here for you and maybe you can give us some insight into your thoughts on it. Yeah, uh, thanks, Jimmy, and um, thanks everyone for, for coming along to listen to our presentation this morning. Um, I suppose really what this module it has at its core is the uh, current situation around climate change and the response that we have to have to that in the construction industry. So we're looking at things like minimizing, designing to minimize energy demand for uh, lighting, internal lighting, um, also uh, looking at proposals and solutions for natural ventilation as opposed to uh, mechanical ventilation and cooling um, and also looking at things like the overall energy demand of a building considering things like its fabric, its orientation, uh, the, the local climate and weather files and it's predominantly uh, delivered using the IES virtual environment suite of software uh, which is pretty much the industry leader for this particular type of task. There's also um, a part of the module which it covers life cycle analysis, uh, which will also be done using uh, uh, software uh, solutions as well. So like everything else in the course that you've heard about so far, it's 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 really software driven. Um, it's 100% continually assessed uh, across uh, four different assignments throughout the delivery mode, uh, looking at different things, as I said, like the daylight analysis, the thermal performance of a building. Uh, and that, that goes into quite a high level of detail. It goes right down to the location of the building and the form of it, as well as the materials used. So how will um, a heavyweight building compared to a lightweight building in a colder climate? And how would a heavyweight and lightweight building compare to each other in a warmer climate? Climate. So climate and geographic location comes into it as well. It's quite detailed, but very interesting uh, considering uh, literally the climate that we're in at the moment. That's great, Wayne. Very topical. And um, so this, this elective is, is delivered over 13 weeks and it's 15 credits. So that's the, that's the same as the, the other elective. Um, so thanks very much, Wayne. Thanks for your time. So the fourth item here, guys, on our list is uh, is the Applied Work-Based uh, Research Project. And we have uh, John Scahill on the call there that might talk us through a bit of this module. John? Thank you, Jimmy, um, and thank you all for joining this webinar. The um, Applied Work-Based Project is a 30-credit module, and uh, it forms the second part of the diploma in BIM and Digital Leadership. 
Uh, in the first two modules, you build and develop your core knowledge and technical skills on BIM and digital leadership. In this module, you get an opportunity to use some of that knowledge and apply some of those skills that you have developed in the first two modules. The aim with this module is to identify a suitable work-based project uh, that you can critically examine and evaluate and produce a formal report which you can utilise in your workplace. Uh, the report can explore a particular problem or other issues that are related to the implementation of BIM and digital leadership in your own organisation. Uh, it could explore opportunities either for uh, changing or enhancing existing practices or introducing new technologies uh, to your workplace. The module will introduce contemporary research paradigms and methodologies uh, that are suitable for uh, applied work-based uh, research projects. So the module will focus on topics such as setting out research aims and objectives, uh, undertaking a focused literature review, reviewing appropriate methods and methodologies such as qualitative research, qualitative research, quantitative research and mixed methods, uh, critically evaluating and selecting a method uh, appropriate for your project and when you do that you then justify the, mean, uh, the reason that you made the decision for the particular methodology that you chose. Um, We'll also look at recognising ethical issues or other dimensions that might apply and also looking at how to define any limitations that there might be to your work. The learning outcomes for the module uh, include the ability to critically evaluate applied work-based research paradigms, methodologies and methods, um, evaluating and critically assessing uh, research strategies and frameworks, critically exploring uh, the application of social science research in the built environment, so we're looking at sort of uh, concepts such as community of practice, um, how to plan and execute uh, a work-based research project, how to critically evaluate uh, and examine the design, development and piloting of digital uh, construction interventions, and also to critically evaluate different tools that can translate and present applied uh, work-based research findings to different audiences. The module, like all the material, is fully online and it will be delivered over 20 weeks uh, through a series of facilitated workshops, lectures and tutorials. And like the rest of the modules in this program, it is assessed through 100% continuous assessment. That's great, John. Yeah, and again, I think, um, you know, you'll be finding problems within, I'm sure everyone has plenty of problems in their in their work environment. So, I mean, there's there's plenty of opportunity there to, to, uh, to get some solutions there for your organization. I think, you know, that would be positive for your organization as well, if you have the ability to solve some problems. So that's great, John, thank you very much. And we'll go back again, we'll have a look and see where we're at. So once you get your, your uh, research project completed, you obviously, you end up with your um, award. So you can exit at, at this stage with 60 credits. So again, just to recap, we have BIM and Digital Leadership, which is mandatory. Then we have our visual programming and our sustainability, sustainability there are 215s. And then you have your uh, work-based project there as well. So once you get 60 credits, you can exit. And that will give you your um, <clears throat> postgraduate diploma. So then you can move on if you wish to the master's, which is an add-on to this program and it's all tied in using um, a minor thesis. So did you want to say a few words on this one, John? Yeah, again, so yes, yeah, so, so the first project that you do, the work-based project, is really a, an applied project which uh, looks at solving a problem in, in, in your work situation. The thesis then uh, looks at sort of critically analysing this and uh, making it basically a, an academic piece of work. So there would be a, a number of um, methodologies that you, you would apply to this that would uh, take the build on the work that you have uh, done for the work based project and you might uh, sort of reanalyze it or, or maybe carry out other anal other analysis to sort of uh, to make the project uh, into an academic piece of work, which um, the idea ultimately is that you produce a journal paper or a paper of a publishable quality based on the research that you carry out. Um, on on the on this module, uh, it probably will be a building up of uh, whatever you did for your minor work project, but you could also pick a new topic if you wanted. But I think most people will tend to build on whatever they study for their work based project. Great, yeah, and it's nicely broken down there. You can see you've got four weeks, ten percent. Then week five, you've another. You've got your research proposal to to put in, and then after twenty five weeks, you have your paper. 
and your conference presentation, which can be done online, I believe. Um, so that could be like the likes of um, CETA or some some um, conference like that. You present, you can present your work. Um, <clears throat> so once that's done, guys, you again you get your reward. So you've got your ninety credits and you've achieved ninety credits. So you get your reward as a, with your masters. And then the last thing to talk about, guys, because I know we're twenty odd minutes in here and people probably want to go for their lunch. Um, we'll take questions at the end, obviously, but we can talk about uh, funding and fees. So like we talked first with the cert there with, with Andy, and then we talked where you'd move on from the certificate to the higher diploma at level eight, um, which is one route. Um, also, there is the, the cert in BIM digital leadership that you start off with. Um, we, we just talked today about the postgraduate diploma here in BIM and digital leadership. Um, but you could obviously exit at your sort as well if you wish, but you know, financially you're better off starting on the postgraduate diploma. And then the master's obviously is an add on to that postgraduate diploma that we talked about there at the end. Now, just one thing to note there, guys, is the closing, <clears throat> the closing date. So, um, oops, sorry. The 9th of uh, December is the closing date for the postgraduate diploma. Now, we have a lot of applications in, but just people are. Uh, are aware that um, the 9th of December is the closing date for the rest of the programs we talked about today in there in January. But this one is is 90% uh, funded. So the closing date is that little bit um, earlier. So I'm happy to go back through any anything there that um, we might have gone over, guys, if anyone had any questions that they wanted to, to ask. Um, there's our contact information. Um, Andy, you, you met there online, myself um, as the two program chairs on all those programs, and Linda, our um, host as well. That's our contact information. So any questions on that, guys? Yeah, um, I just have um, one quick question, if you don't mind. Um, my name is Carl. I'm the BIM implementation uh, group lead here in Linesight. Um, just a quick one. It's a great program. I, I know a lot of people on the call uh, were interested in take up this opportunity to upskill in BIM. Um, the, we are focused on 5D uh, in line sight predominantly and a bit of 4D as well coming in shortly. Is there anything specific on your program, Andy, or can any of your other contributors uh, say whether or not you're focused on the cost inside of, of BIM, or is it an overall perspective of the BIM process? Um, it's an overall perspective. We One of the electives that we brought in recently is BIM for contractors. That would involve 4D. Um, so it's actually for the, the guys on site to snagging using your BIM models, um, laser scanning and everything, but it would include 4D then as well. It's adding time into the equation where we'd um, essentially be building 4D models you be linking up elements in the model to your, your Microsoft project, your Gantt charts, and, and phasing those in the model in a 4D environment. And um, we don't touch on 5D. We have had a couple of students who have carried out their, their research project around that area, but um, it's not, I suppose, taught on the program. Okay, thanks very much, Andy. No problem, yes, thanks. Thank, thank you, Carl, for the question. Any other questions, guys? We must have did a great job of presenting questions. That's great, guys. And um, thanks very much as well. Also, like um, we have a lot of um, people from around the country there, so it's great to see. Um, it's quite a few up there in Dublin. Um, I know there's a few that didn't get a chance, guys. We scanned the code there to start just to get a feel for where people were in the country um if you if you want you can still uh, have an opportunity to do that um any final questions guys before we go for our lunch so if you are interested guys i'd suggest um just having a look on the dasby website and just click in from there and you'll get your um you can click into your application form on the DASB website and then it'll it'll guide you through the process. Pretty straightforward. Um, after that, I would suggest um, we have a nice cup of coffee and enjoy the rest of your lunch. Uh, Linda, are you there? 
I'm here. Yes, I just wanted to um, remind again that the recording will be sent out later on with all the links and everything. And if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to contact any of us um, at any time, really. So um, you will get a recording of this and please like and follow our social media. There's plenty of updates on all the courses there. Hmm. Actually, I've, I suppose one good a comment we should we should have talked about there, Kaha, when you asked that question about 4D. As part of DASBY, we are part of our uh, job is to develop new programs designed for industry. So if there is a need out there for a particular program or a module on something like 5D, um, it's certainly something that DASBY can can look at providing and developing over the next couple of months. Yeah, so. just on that, yeah, definitely on the west coast of Ireland, uh, I know there's one or two um, uh, institutions doing 5D on the east coast, but we'd be interested if the Atlantic TU were looking into that kind of um, aspect, especially from the line sites perspective. But we do do 4D and sustainability as well, so we are looking into those um, as well. So it's, it's a great course, I must commend you on it. It looks, it looks amazing. Great. Carl, if you want to send me an email, if you want to chat about that, about the 5D, um, even just even for the, the program we have there, if it's something we should be including. Um, yeah, perfect. If you want perfect. to have a, we can have a chat after this about that. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll get straight on to you. Thank you. That'd be great. Thanks, Carl. Yeah, because we have great resources in the department in our QS program, so well, that would help. That's great. So if there's no more questions, guys, I think we, we can finish at that. Thanks very much. Thanks for the thanks for taking the time, guys. Appreciate it. Thank Hopefully, it's doing in January. Thanks you. very much. Cheers, folks. Thank you.